Hi, I'm Yuna Kravitz, and I'm here to give you a quick roundup of the top web things you need to know from Google I.O. this year. One of the ways that Chrome contributes to the web ecosystem is by introducing new platform capabilities that push the boundaries of what's possible in the browser. We're continuing this work through powerful APIs like WebAssembly. At I.O., we announced WebAssembly's support for managed memory languages like Dart and Kotlin, and we're super excited about the possibilities that this opens up for developers who want to make their code investments go farther. So now you can truly build once and run it with native speed on mobile platforms as well as the web. Another feature that we're particularly excited about is WebGPU. This API turns the device GPU into a powerful accelerator for graphics, machine learning models, and other compute-intensive apps that developers can dream up. If you haven't noticed, AI is all the rage right now, rightly so, and with the performance gains that developers can make with WebGPU, the platform is getting ready for AI-first web apps. With new features landing at a renewed pace through initiatives like Project Fugu, the browser is getting primed for advanced web apps that can deliver fast and rich experiences for your users now. It's exciting to see businesses find success in bringing their products to the web and reaching users faster. Speaking of reaching users more effectively, extensions are a great tool to have in your tool belt that can build a deeper, more personalized product experience for your web users. And we want to set developers investing in Chrome extensions up for success. So not only are we extending our timeline for Manifest V3 to get it right, but we're also introducing some exciting changes to the Chrome Web Store UI for more improved recommendations and better discovery. And we're also adding new engagement surfaces, such as the Chrome side panel for extensions developers to leverage. Over the past few years, we've helped developers focus on the metrics that are essential to great user experiences through Core Web Vitals. After extensive experimentation and with positive feedback from the community, we're announcing our intent to replace first input delay with interaction to next paint, or INP, a metric that measures responsiveness more holistically. This change will take effect in March 2024, so we can give you enough time to get familiar with and optimize for INP. Another space that's truly helping raise the bar for quality is the momentum that we're gaining in web UI features. From new responsive UI capabilities to features that improve developer experience by giving you more control over your CSS architecture to extended color and theming capabilities and new typography features to customizable components with accessible defaults and browser managed state and to some really exciting updates and animation and interactions APIs. Whew, that was a lot. And there's even more coming to the space with a lot of it landing across browsers. It really feels like a golden era for web UI. OK, moving on. For web apps that rely on logged in experiences, now is the time to upgrade from passwords and two-factor authentication to pass keys. They're simpler, more secure, and work across devices and platforms. The future of authentication is here. Speaking of user experiences that span devices and platforms, we're also investing in tools to help developers bring the best of the web to their Android apps. Because you know, it's not about web or native, it's web and native. From better testing to more functionalities, we're making a bunch of improvements to WebView, a common way of embedding web content in native apps. And to create a more secure and user-friendly way to let users view web content in your app, we're making improvements to custom tabs, including partial custom tabs that make multitasking between the app and the web much easier. As we collectively build for a helpful, more productive web, we have to invest in the highest standards of security and privacy for our users. Working with the ecosystem on the Privacy Sandbox initiative, we've already made some progress in removing tracking vectors on the web. And we're now shipping new cookie features, allowing developers to prepare as we get closer to the end of third-party cookies in Chrome. We enjoy new web capabilities as much as the next person. But we also know that keeping up with platform changes remains one of the top challenges for developers. Is it supported across browsers? Can I use it yet? An equal challenge for developers is to get tooling support that meets them in their workflow and takes into account your tech stack choices. So at I.O. this year, we announced Baseline, an evergreen set of features that are fully supported by the current and previous versions of all major browsers. The label of this baseline set will start to roll out on MDN and Can I Use over the next few months. And you can learn more about it at the link here. 
Understanding the cross-browser support status is equally important when you test your app. With WebDriver Baidai, we're bringing you the best of the Chrome DevTools protocol and WebDriver Classic. So you can write your tests with any of your favorite automation tools and automate them in any browser of your choice. And finally, so you can debug the code that you authored and not the harder to read optimized output because you build with a framework, we're making significant improvements to the debugging experience in Chrome DevTools to tame the complexity, as we like to call it. I know that was a whirlwind of updates and launches, but I hope that you're as excited as we are with everything that's landing here in the web platform universe. Until the next Google I.O., I'll see you online.